There is plenty of work to be done. It's a, it's a long journey. It's, I believe overall it's a positive. And when we communicate the results of the study, it's not the end of the story. Actually, it's the beginning because it opens much more avenues for investigation. We have to keep in mind that if anybody is able to delay the onset of the disease by five years, mm -hmm. we decrease the prevalence of AD, of Alzheimer's disease, by 50% mm -hmm. by 2050. I do hope that Biogen, with its partner, will be able to participate to this benefit for society. It's a public affair crisis and um, um, we hope that we'll be able to contribute to improvements in, uh, in, in this field. Are you convinced that removal of the amyloid plaques is, is the right way to go based on what you've seen with these results? We have a better chance today than a month ago. I think it reinforces this hypothesis. We have seen the prime data, the three years extension with aducanumab, where we have seen an erosion to close to 80% with the highest dose of the plaque and a correlation with the cognitive decline or the slowing down of the cognitive decline. And here this is again confirmed. So the, the study is a positive, but there are still some questions to be answered. And the one on APOE is obvious and is very fair. We have to follow through on that. Michelle, how, does this, how do these results affect your confidence, if at all, in your other uh, Alzheimer's drug, aducanumab, which is in a later stage trial with results expected in 2020? Does this change your thinking or increase or decrease your confidence about that study? The Biogen team is working on the long-range plan, and we are making a lot of progress. And uh, these data increased the, the probability of success, clearly. Increased but the probability have to of remain success. Yes, yes, absolutely. But we have to remain very modest. We know that 99.6% uh, of all the studies failed. And here we have some leads and uh, we are reinforced by, by this uh, additional data point here. But we will remain focused. I spoke to the team yesterday and I said we keep the head down and we keep working. When do you expect that we'll get some more clarity on, that, on those subgroups like the APOE4 um, patients who were, there were fewer of whom were in the, uh, the high dose group that had that great result. So uh, our colleagues at ASI have, have the, the lead on that. And while we speak, they're working, I'm sure, on, uh, on the bringing more clarity to the community uh, on the APOE. And uh, I think it's a matter of a little bit of time. I don't know exactly when. Michelle, there are two groups that are watching this today. One, one is the investors, and the other would be patients, their families, their doctors who, who are trying to figure out how far away we are from potentially being able to slow the onset of Alzheimer's. What, what, what would you tell that second group of people today? What, what, I, what I would like to say is that uh, it's a long journey, it's a tenuous work. We need to be very resilient. And uh, this is the mission in life of a company like Biogen. We dedicate 100% of our R&D budget in this space. And we want to provide a solution for the Alzheimer's patients you know, in the future. We have six programs in development and today we are more reinforced than a month ago and on 24-1 we did not expect much six months ago and now we know that you know our colleagues from ASI will be meeting regulators soon this is a positive Michelle I also want to ask you about drug prices this of course is a major topic for the industry right now we've seen a lot of your your peer companies come out with pledges not to raise drug prices for the rest of the year Gilead was one just last night we've seen similar pledges from Novartis Merck Pfizer Eli Lilly uh, I don't believe you guys commented on that in your conference call earlier this week, but I know that Pharma just had a board meeting, the lobbying group, last week. Did you guys have a conversation there and say, hey, it would really please the administration if we came out and said, we're not going to raise prices for the rest of the year. Was there a conversation like that? And does Biogen plan to commit to a similar thing? So this is absolutely a hot topic, and I'm not sure that making a pledge of doing a bit less of the same is a solution to the affordability problem, because before price, it's the affordability for the patient, it is front and center. I think that uh, the government is taking that very seriously. The industry and the trade association is also taking that very seriously. We want to be part of the solution. You know that Biogen has been always very progressive in this matter. We engage into value-based contracts in MS and we are looking at other alternatives. We take note about the pace of price increase and uh, we, are, we are working with the trade association to find market-based solutions. We are confident, and I'm even more confident when I speak with the authorities and they continue to place science and innovation at the center. I am fundamentally 
optimistic about the future of the U.S. market because it's all about innovation and this is where Biogen is. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.